Hello everybody, welcome to this episode of Rotors. My name is Kenny McKee, and today we're be talking about why the rotor engine makes so much power for so little displacement. This video is going to be really thick in theory, and if you have at least a decent working knowledge of engines, this should be pretty simple, but I also want to cater this video to people that don't know so much about engines. So we're going to be going over basic definitions, all the way to the complexities of why it does what it does. Now if you're new to the channel, this is Rotors Magazine, we're specifically dedicated to rotary content, so we do rotary vlogs, we show you guys how to work on your rotary cars, and then we also talk about rotary theory. Um, this video is obviously going to be focusing more on the theory, so if you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe because we have more content on the way, especially during the winter months, we're going to be focusing more and more on the education aspect because the shop's going to be too cold to get into. So let's just jump into it. Okay, so before we start talking about rotary engine displacement, I think first we need to talk about piston engine displacement and how it's measured. Piston engine displacement is the sweat volume of all the pistons inside the cylinders after every piston is fired. So for example, if I had a four cylinder engine with half a liter of air per piston, after all four pistons fired, I'd be left with two liters. Now, in a four stroke four cylinder configuration, it takes two crank revolutions to displace that two liters of air. And that's important to know, because in a two stroke engine, it only takes one crank revolution to fire all four pistons. So why did I bring up two stroke and four stroke engines? The reason is because the rotary draws a lot of comparisons to the two stroke. And a lot of people go as far as to say the rotary is a two stroke engine when that is factually incorrect. Now before I go into that definition, I think once again I need to go ahead and make sure that we understand what a four stroke and a two stroke engine are. A four stroke engine is your traditional engine you'll find in most cars. That is, the engine goes through, the pistons go through four separate strokes. That is an intake stroke, a compression stroke, an ignition stroke, and an exhaust stroke. Four separate events. Whereas you look at a two stroke engine, the intake and the compression are one event, and then the exhaust and ignition are one event. In the rotary engine, if you look, all four events are separate from each other. So if you look, it takes an intake, and then it compresses, and then there is a spark event, and then there is an exhaust event, all four events being separate, making the rotary engine indeed a four-stroke engine. Now, the confusion with the rotary engine comes with the way that the power is made in the rotary engine, and that is, like a two-cycle engine, every crank revolution is indeed a power stroke in the rotary engine. So, if you have a two-rotor engine, for every one e-shaft revolution, two faces are going to fire. If you have a three-rotor, three faces are going to fire. Okay, so this is where the video gets really confusing, and for the initiated people, you probably get where I'm going with this. For the uninitiated, I'm going to apologize ahead of time, but I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible as I can for you. So before we get into the next part, I want to recap what we know now. Engine displacement is the sweat volume of all pistons after they've fired. That's all of them. And then if you look at a four-stroke engine, all pistons in a four-stroke engine fire after two crank revolutions, whereas all pistons and a two-stroke engine fire after one crank revolution. Another interesting fact that you need to know, and this one's also very important, is that each face in the rotor displaces 0.65 liters of air. So every face, there's three faces on each rotor, obviously because it's a triangle. And if you look at two rotor, that means you have six faces. And if you have a three rotor, that means you have nine faces, and then so on and so forth. So understand that you have six faces at 0.65 liters of air. So how do we get the 1.3 liter measurement out of a rotary engine? Well, it's simple. After one, that's one E-shaft revolution, the engine displaces 1.3 liters of air. Remember, there are also six faces of the rotors. So the debate comes with when do we stop measuring displacement in the rotary engine? Remember, like I said, the rotary engine is a four cycle engine. So should it be compared to a four cycle engine? If you were to do that, that would mean that the four cycle engine displaces all its air in two crankshaft revolutions. So in two crankshaft revolutions, a 13B engine will displace 2.6 liters of air. That 1.3 liter engine is displacing 2.6 liters of air at the same time that a piston engine is displacing 2.6 liters of air. And this is where it gets really confusing. Remember how people say that it is a two stroke because it has one power stroke. I'm gonna, we're gonna throw that one out because that's not correct. Don't, when people say it's a two stroke, that's not true. And knowing that, it's not even relevant. Because what it comes down to, so we're gonna go back to the beginning definition that I had at the very beginning to start off with. It was engine displacement is the sweat volume of all pistons after they've fired. 
there are many people that are in the camp of the idea that each rotor face should be considered basically a piston. So that means that if you were to measure all the displacement of all six sides of every rotor, you would then have a 3.9 liter engine. However, that 3.9 liter measurement would come after three crankshaft revolutions rather than two. So that would mean that it's a little bit weird. So this is that's why the, the, the 1.3 liter figure becomes a little bit confusing for a lot of people. So let's go ahead and recap, make this simple because it got a little weird and a little heavy. So let's go back through it. 1.3 liters of air is displaced in one crankshaft revolution. 2.6 liters of air is displaced in two crankshaft revolutions. And 3.9 liters of air is displaced in three crankshaft revolutions. So if you want to say the full actual sweat volume of the engine is 3.9 liters, you can say that. You, if you want to say that it is comparable, because many people say that it is comparable to a 2.6 liter engine, that is also factually correct. However, the manufacturer defined displacement is 1.3 liters because of some archaic reason that doesn't make any sense. So I thought that I would give you guys that information so you guys can do with it whatever you want. Um, I'm in the camp of not caring. It doesn't matter to me, but I figured I'd throw them all out there and present what everyone's ideas are. And uh, what do you guys think? Um, if you have a different opinion, leave it in the comments down below. If you have any more information you want to add, go ahead and leave that in the comments down below because I made this pretty simple. Um, but I appreciate you guys for tuning in, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Be sure to check out some of these other educational videos. We have more on the way. What do you want to see? Leave it in the comments down below. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for tuning in.